This is GCSE Electricity Lesson 1, and we'll start with electrical current. And the objectives are to recall what conductors and insulators are, to give a definition of electrical current, and to recall and apply the equation for electrical current. So electrical conductors and insulators. So an electrical conductor is a material through which electrical current flows easily. All metals are conductors. Electrical insulators are the opposite. They have a very high resistance to the flow of electrical current. So if you want to pause the video, maybe you want to make some notes. And if you want, we can do, you can put one to six in your book or on your paper, and then identify whether it's a conductor or an insulator. I'm going to go for the answers now. So copper is obviously a conductor, rubber, that's an insulator. Steel, conductor. Mercury, Conductor, paper's an insulator, plastic, insulator, diamond, insulator, and graphite is a conductor. Hopefully that went okay, let's move on. Electrical charge. Electric charge can be either positive or negative. So a bit of a recap of this, and you also do this in chemistry. In an atom, an electron has a negative charge that is the same size as the positive charge of a proton. Neutrons have no electric charge, it's zero. As an atom <clears throat> has the same number of electrons as protons, it is uncharged, so atoms have no charge. In chemistry and in physics, if you remove electrons, you would have positive an overall positive charge, which means you have a positive ion. And if you gain electrons, you have an overall negative charge, so it becomes a negative ion. But atoms are uncharged, so they have you know zero net charge, the same amount of electrons as protons. So that's what electric charge is. Let's move on. If you want to make any notes, remember just pause. Electric current. So the definition, an electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. When I give you an equation, I'll show you how, how you can remind yourself of this in your examination. So that's this top one. So that's the definition. So definitely make sure you get that down. So this might not make as much sense until you see the equation. An electric current of one ampere or one amp flows when a charge of one coulomb passes a point in an electric circuit in one second. So if you had two coulombs of charge, which is what charge is measured in, passing a point in one second, there will be a current of two amps. If it was three coulombs per second, three amps. So metallic conductors, example of copper wire, electrons carry a negative charge from the negative side of a power supply around the circuit and back to the positive side. So the electrons would actually go this way. I'll just put E minus. However, in your when you do your calculations and in your diagrams and the questions that you'll get in an exam, electrical current is given as positive to negative. So the current is this way. Current symbol is I, we'll do that in a moment. So it's the opposite of what you think it might be. And it's called conventional current. So positive to negative. It's called conventional current. Positive to negative. Remember, if you want to make any notes, please pause. I definitely get the conventional current down and I definitely get the electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. In an examination, that definition alone can be worth two marks. You shouldn't be losing marks in examinations for definitions because you can easily learn them before the exam. All right, let's move on. So how do we measure current? I'm going to get a circuit diagram, simple circuit diagram up in a moment and show you how. But as you might already know, these are all ammeters. So we measure electric current using ammeters. So we've got an electrical one on the left, school ammeter, very old school one on the right hand side, and then a super modern multimeter, which can measure current as well in the bottom left. So let's have a look at this diagram. Okay, so the circuit symbol for an ammeter is here. Let's give you a few more just in case. You might know these from GCC, sorry, from before GCC, so key stage three. So this one at the top is a cell. 
you might have thought it's a battery, but if you get two or more of those next to each other in what we call series, that would indeed be a battery. Okay. The thing at the bottom is an indicator or bulb or lamp. I'll just call it a lamp. So an ammeter is, is what we use. An ammeter is used to measure current and it's connected in series. Now what series basically means at this moment in time is next to. So if I wanted to measure the, the current going through this lamp, I could simply put, let's try to tidy this up. I could put the ammeter in series next to the lamp and it will, it will tell us how much current is passing through that lamp. Now you might be thinking, well, can I put it at the other side? And yes, you can. Current in a, in a series circuit, which is what this is, we'll do more about this in the third lesson. The current is the same at all points, so an ammeter can go either side of the component. Or it could even, you know, if there was multiple components, as long as it's, you know, in the same line, it's perfectly fine. So to consolidate, an ammeter is used to measure current. Current, remember, is measured in amps, and you put it basically next to the component. All right, let's move on. So the charge current equation. Electrical charge is equal to current times time. Q equals IT, if you want to write this down. So Q equals IT. Charge is measured in coulombs. So that's charge. In fact, the charge is above, so I'll just write the unit. So that's measured in coulombs. Which we use a C for the unit. I is current. Current is measured in amps or amperes. Amps, amps will do. And the unit for that is simply an A. T is time, measured in seconds. And then there's one more thing I want to show you with this equation before we do some practice questions. So we've got the equation, which is Q equals IT. Now, if we rearrange that to get current, so we should be getting good at this now. So it's I times T. If we want to get rid of the time, the multiply by T, we have to divide by time to get current. So current is charge over time. Okay. And that leads back to the definition. So if, you, if you're struggling to remember the definition, you can just use the equation. So if we write this out, current is, just by looking at the equation, current is the, well, it's charge over time. So I'm going to write the rate of flow. Of electrical charge. You can just write charge. Rate of essentially just means divided by time. So current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. Done. Two marks. Okay, let's do some questions. So calculate the charge passing through a device when a current of 0 0.5 amps flows for three minutes. So you want to pause and do that one. I'll take you through the answer now. So the equation Q equals IT. Remember to always write the equation out. So charge passing Q is equal to I. The current is 0 0.5 amps. Multiply by the time, three minutes. So we need to put that into seconds. So three minutes, three times 60 is 180 seconds. So that gives us a charge that is equal to half of 180 is 90 coulombs. Hopefully that one went okay. Let's move on to the next one. So on this one, we need to calculate the current. So let's pause and have a go. Calculate the current flowing when a charge of 240 coulombs flows through a device in 1.5 minutes. So depending on your math skills, you could do Q equals IT and just rearrange straight away for current by doing charge divided by time and then put the numbers in, which is okay. Or you can put the numbers in first, then rearrange. So charge is 240 equals the current I times the time. Now 1.5 minutes is 90 seconds. So we need to get rid of the times 90. So let's divide by 90. So 240 divided by 90 will give us the current. Current is... 2.6 recurring or 2.7 amps. Let's do the next one. So if you want to pause and have a go at this one, you need to be careful with this one. So, so we've got 50 amps and we've got 2.4 MC. Now that capital M means mega, which means million. So you could write that if you've done standard form. You could just times it by 
you know, one million, which is one with six zeros. Or you can do standard form, which is 2.4 times 10 to the power of 6 coulombs. So anyway, it wants time. So Q equals I2. I'm going to put the numbers in. So charge is the 2.4 times 10 to the 6. You could just have 2, 4 and 5 zeros. It's completely up to you. I'm going to use the standard form. So 2.4 times 10 to the 6 equals 50 amps times 10. So we need to get rid of the times 50, so let's divide by 50. So it should be 2.4, or 2,400,000, times 10 to the 6, divided by 50. And that will give us the time passed, which is equal to 48,000 seconds. Okay, let's move on. We've got a table for you to complete. Okay, I'm going to pause and have a go at this, and then I'll take you through the answers. So I'm going to go for the answers now. So Q equals IT is the equation. So the first one, let's pop this up here. So number one, so it's Q equals IT. So 60 equals the current, now it's 200 milliamps. So if you're not sure about this one, milli mean, well, millimeters, there's a, th a thousand millimeters in a meter, and there's a thousand milliamps in an amp, or a, a thousand millivolts in a volt. Milli just means you need to divide it by a thousand. So 200 divided by a thousand, will give you 0 0.2 amps times the time. So to get the time, it's going to be 60 divided by 0 0.2. And 60 divided by 0 0.2 is 300 seconds. Next one is simply Q equals IT. We don't have to rearrange that one, so we just need to times the numbers together. So it's 13 amps times one minute, and obviously one minute is 60 seconds, so 13 times 60 is 780 coulombs. So the next one, you've got to be careful. We've got the minutes to, to convert into seconds and we've got the kilo coulombs to convert into coulombs. So kilo, remember, means 1,000. So that 0 0.96 kilo coulombs is 960 coulombs. And the four minutes is 240 seconds. So for number three, you could just do current is charge over time if, you, you know, if your math skills are up to scratch in that regard. Or you can do 960 equals current times 240, and then do 960 divided by 240 seconds. So that gives you a current of 4 amps. And the last one to find time, so it's Q equals IT. We've got milliamps again, remember that's just divided by 1000. So Q equals IT will be 3 equals, we've got 50 divided by 1000, which is 0 0.05 amps times the time. So to get time on its own, we need to get rid of the time 0 0.05, and we need to do 3 divided by 0 0.05, and that gives an answer of 60 seconds. A little bit longer than usual, that video, but hopefully you found that really useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll speak to you soon.